Hi guys, how are you? I hope you're having a wonderful week. For today's video, I thought I would just do a skincare regimen, just the basic, you know, the most simplistic. I will try and keep it simple, although my own personal skincare, I use a ton of different things because as I get older with menopause, like, you know, all the sun damage that I did when I was younger, putting baby oil and then laying down on the beach and fall asleep for three hours, for example, has caused a lot of damage in my skin. You know, back in the 70s, the 80s, we didn't really know that SPF was that important. And so, uh, yeah, I literally fried my skin in my, in my teen years. So all that damage is coming through now in the form of hyperpigmentation, melasma. My skin is just not only dry, but I'm having all these other issues um, because of all the damage. As most of you know, I work at Sephora. I'm a beauty advisor at Sephora, and I get a lot, a lot of clients coming in um, confused about what to use when and what goes first. And you know, does the sunscreen come before the moisturizer? Um, you know, does the primer go after the moisturizer? Like people are really confused. I thought I would just do a video. Um, a very general to give everyone a sense of you know the steps the basic steps that go into a skincare regimen and so if you're new to skincare this this might be really helpful to you to kind of clear up some some things hopefully and I will also um, show you uh, my favorite products in each category at least I will try to show you as many as possible so without further ado let's just get started Okay, step one is cleaning the skin. Now, in the morning, you wake up, you have no makeup on, so one uh, one cleanse, like a regular face wash, is fine. Uh, you can also just wash your face with uh, cold water, and that's fine. You don't really need to clean in the morning that, that deeply. So um, sometimes people can just put some, um, what is that, water? micellar water into a you know cotton round and just kind of wipe your face that way that's also a great option um, so the evening uh, cleansing routine is a little different in my case i use makeup and i put on sunscreen and so for me to have the the skin be really clean it takes a two-step uh, cleansing and so usually the first one is with either an oil or a balm and um, i have here my I'm just going to talk about two of my top uh, bombs and before I show you the products you just kind of with your face full of makeup dry skin you just scoop some up rub it between your fingers and then massage it into your face and if you have makeup down your neck I always carry it all the way down so I have sometimes my ears everything <laughs> um, so I like to be really thorough I take a couple of seconds of massaging it in around the eyes because especially if you use waterproof mascara you're gonna need um, you know something to to dissolve that and melt it away and so once that's done you can either take a damp uh, washcloth and then wipe it or you can just go in directly and throw water on it these are my two top two right now this one's called juno skin and you can get that one from amazon it's really nice it has a like a citrusy vitamin c scent and then this one is my favorite is from wishful and it's called Clean Genie. Uh, Wishful is Huda, Huda Beauty's line. Um, and I don't know, I don't see it in the store anymore. It was on the shelf, but then they pulled it off. So I'm hoping that this hasn't been discontinued. I'm hoping, hoping. It's a great one, but if you can't get this one, I highly recommend the Juno. Like my daughter prefers this one. I prefer this one because I love the scent and because it kind of provides like a little bit more oil than this one does. All right, so then once that's been wiped off or rinsed off, then you go in, you go in with a regular cleanser. And again, you just massage it into your face for a couple of seconds. Make sure you really take time to massage things in and then rinse it off. My top, top number one cleanser, and it has been for many years, is from Philosophy. This one, Purity Made Simple, and it's a hydrating cleanser and this stuff guys is amazing it has the most beautiful scent spa-like luxurious that kind of vibe and 
I love it not just because it smells beautiful but because it does a great job and it doesn't dry my skin it doesn't strip my skin um, it's so good that you can use this as your two steps so sometimes if I like don't have one of these around or an oil I'll just go in with this one once and then I go and once I rinse it then I go in it again and this stuff removes makeup it removes sunscreen it removes mascara it just is like a all around amazing product that really does check all the boxes for me so that's one uh, that I highly recommend and then most recently I discovered this one from Caudalie which is also really nice really um, pleasant nice on the skin has a bunch of skin loving ingredients now I think this one is gonna be a little bit more um, it's pricier than this one uh, but it's a beautiful product and if you have dry mature skin it's it's one that I would highly recommend if it's something that is within your budget. Now the next step is toner. It's a, a, a step that a lot of people skip. It's optional. I always consider toner as part of like, you know, uh, your basic skincare and I've always incorporated it. So after you are done washing your face for the second time, you pat it dry, don't swipe, pat dry don't over dry it because it's nice if the skin remains a little bit like a little humid humidity on it um you go in with your toner you can either pour it in your hands and then kind of push it into the skin or you can pour some into a cotton round and then distribute it that way some people like doing it that way with the cotton round because they use it sort of like an extra step to clean the skin and if you haven't done a great job with steps one and two then the toner will end up removing whatever was left if there was anything left and you can then see it on the cotton round i like to not waste my products so um i put it on my hands and then i push it in my number one is this one from lancome it's a hydrating toner Tonique Comfort, that's the name of it. And by the way, I'll, I'll have all the products listed in the description box for you. Um, so yes, this one has been my number one for like three, four years now. I keep rebuying it. It's sort of like a, a toner slash essence, which means it's super hydrating. It's, it's got like that milky consistency and it has a beautiful rose scent. And we know that products that have rose tend to be more hydrating. So step three is hydrating. And again, this is another step that most people skip. Most people don't, don't worry about it. Um, I personally is a step that that's a step that I don't skip because my skin is super, super dry. And as I get older and as I have started to implement retinoid in my skincare, um, my skin has gotten so incredibly, so incredibly uh, dry. And also the fact that I struggle with drinking enough water throughout the day. Uh, for me, hydrating the skin is like critical, like hydrating it topically. So for that, um, you would use an essence. and. Uh, again, the essence is similar to a toner, um, so it's going to have that milky consistency. And my one of my favorite ones is this one from Hadalabo. This one you can get on Amazon. I have gone through like three bottles of this. This is an empty one. It's a really light, light, um, has no scent, and it just once you put it on the skin it feels almost like you have applied a moisturizer that's how nice and uh nourishing this one is so i apply it again with my with my hands i just kind of pat it in and then give it a couple of seconds to absorb and really settle into my skin before i move on to the next step which is treatment and that this is when you would apply your serums whatever products you're using to target um, the skin concern that you're having so examples of that would be vitamin c in the morning um, ahas alpha hydroxy acids or bhas oh my god that's my dog scratching the door uh, give me a second guys okay where were we i just had to go up and open the door for her so that she can stop scratching okay let's get back on track we were talking uh treatments yes um so ahas bhas and then there's another one that's phas which is a milder form and by the way all of these are uh, chemical exfoliants so they help 
to get the skin into a healthier, uh, better state. They help with uh, texture, they help with enlarged pores, they help increase the cell turnover so that your skin, um, you know, can get rid of the dead, dead cells, the dead skin, and reveal fresher, better skin. And, you know, with as we get older, this cell turnover process slows down. So that's why we, um, it's important to incorporate these types of acids to help it along. Niacinamide is another type of, of treatment. Niacinamide helps uh, if you are someone that produces excess oil on your skin, niacinamide will help for that. Niacinamide also helps increase this cell turnover. So it's it's one of those ingredients that's also very important to incorporate into your skincare routine. And I find that the most affordable way that I've been able to do that is um, through the Inky List and through The Ordinary. And I will have um, their, their links down below. So we spoke about AHAs, BHAs, vitamins, Vitamin C um, and vitamin C again is is a great antioxidant, which um, you know will help protect your skin from the environmental aggressors. So that's why it's so important, um, especially to use it in the morning, right? And um, so all these things, all these serums, you can layer one over the other. Uh, so for example, in the morning after I've done, after I've hydrated my skin and it's already absorbed, I'll go in with a vitamin C. Some examples is this one from Sunday Riley, CEO. It's a great vitamin C, but it's a little pricey. Um, I also love this one from Dermatology. This is um, vitamin C5, that's from their Renew line. The, um, the Ordinary, um, let me see, the Inky List. No, actually both of them make a vitamin C serum. I don't have the bottle with me right here to show you, but you can also um, go that route. Like you don't have to spend a ton of money buying products like this when you can just kind of, you know, start off with, with some of these more affordable products. And so these are just some examples. I also incorporate um, things to treat my hyperpigmentation because like I said with all the sun damage over the years now I'm experiencing a lot of these marks I don't know if you can see it I have foundation on but they still peek through and that's you know considered hyperpigmentation I have really uneven skin tone and it just seems to get worse um, over time and so I'm always consistently treating those. Some examples are this one from Dear Skin, tranexamic acid. That is like the number one ingredient to treat hyperpigmentation is tranexamic. The Inky List also makes a tranexamic acid. It'll look like this, um, which so you can opt for that. I also use this product from Good Molecules. It's a discoloration correcting serum. So I'm just giving you examples of, of things that go on in that category. So depending on what, what your concerns are, so for example, for aging skin, it's important to incorporate retinoids at night. This one from the Inky List is just retinol. That's the only ingredient. And that's what I like about these, these companies that's just like single ingredient. I feel like it gives you the freedom to kind of just select the ingredients that you that you need to target your specific concerns and just kind of throw them into your skincare routine. So I feel like it makes it a lot easier. They also have a, a Bacuchiol, I think that's how you pronounce it, which um, studies have been done and um, they confirm that this is a great anti-aging product as well. I think this is going to be the new popular thing that is probably going to be included in a lot of products going forward just like hyaluronic acid was just like niacinamide was like these were you know names that we were being thrown around all the time well i think bakuchiol is going to have its moment for the next couple of years and this one is actually a moisturizer so um i i finished it up i have to pick up another one what else do I have? Oh, this one here, the Inky List is 15% vitamin C and EGF. That's the one that I mentioned before that you can get. Also for anti-aging, I really like this one from Dermatology. It's a needleless serum. It's a super clear light. It's also, all these are empties um, because I'm preparing to film another video uh, with all of my skincare empties and it's going to be a long while, y'all. I have so many products. It's insane. And I was looking at my, my videos and the last time I, I did one was only like three, four months ago, but I have a bin full of empty products. That's how much skincare I use. I mean, it's like, it's my thing. I, I, I go all in. Um, and because I have so many things, I have enlarged pores. 
you know, I have fine lines and wrinkles, like I have a lot of things to address. So therefore I do um, go through a lot of products. Before we, we move on, I just wanted to, again, just kind of clarify some of the key ingredients. Like if you're um, in your 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, or even sooner, if you want to start incorporating products that are anti-aging, I wanted to kind of really list down for you the ones that are super important to have. So first one, vitamin A, which is retinol. We know retinol is the number one ingredient for anti-aging. Vitamin B3, niacinamide. Uh, like I said, it helps control excess oil, but it also helps uh, the skin to maintain like a healthy balance and the turnover process, keep it going. And um, it helps with also dullness of the skin. I mean, niacinamide is like one of those, like it has so many different um, benefits. AHAs, BHAs, PHAs, like I said, if you have sensitive skin, um, look for products that are um, PHA instead, then they'll be less aggressive. If you are acne prone, salicylic acid is um, a great ingredient to incorporate. So it, it has a similar function as niacinamide, um, but niacinamide helps control the excess oil on the surface of the skin. Salicylic acid kind of helps control the amount of oils that you produce. So niacinamide can be seen as a sort of a treatment and salicylic acid can be seen almost as a preventative measure. And using both, maybe using a salicylic acid cleanser and then using niacinamide serum uh, would be a great combination of, of something you can do if you are the kind of person that really struggles with um, excess oils and large pores and things like that. The next step is moisturize. And um, my number one, if you have watched any of my videos, you will know that my number one, the love of my life, has always been Tatcha, the dewy cream. The dewy skin cream. And um, this thing is like the dream. For a dry skin person, this is like the perfect moisturizer. Again, this checks all the boxes. It has a luxurious, very, spa like bougie scent it just kind of transports me um to like i don't know there's something special about it and it's packed with skin loving ingredients it has this beautiful texture to it that gives your skin this glow and it just when you have dry skin you, when you find a product that really like soaks in and gives you that comfort i mean if you have dry skin you'll know you'll understand what i'm saying and this product does that for me it's a little bit pricey. I try to alternate with other moisturizers. Like for example, a good one is this one from the Inky List. It's a peptide moisturizer. And the packaging reminds me of Drunk Elephant. This is how the applicator is. So you push down and the, the product comes out that, that way. These are all empties. This one is a great moisturizer for the nighttime because it's nice and thick. Another thing that I wanted to mention as far as moisturizers, um, typically in the morning, um, it's better to use a moisturizer that's lighter and at night it's better to pick a moisturizer that's nice and thick, right? Um, so for example, they have a green one of this, a green bottle, which is called the water cream. So anytime you see a, um, a product that says water, instead of moisture you'll know that that one is more targeted for people <clears throat> sorry for people with like oily skin or even if you have dry skin you can use it but it's going to be better suited as a, a day moisturizer because throughout the day especially in the summer you know we tend to sweat so you really don't need a, a thick heavy moisturizer during the day um something lighter is, is more appropriate especially if you're going to be putting makeup over it um but you can totally use this morning and night i i would do that if you know if it wasn't so expensive i would use it both morning and night this one from skin fix is um an eye cream they also have a beautiful moisturizer that looks just like this um, I don't have an empty one with me. I threw it out. It's formulated with a bunch of different peptides, which help uh, protect the, the the barrier, your skin barrier, um, sort of just like this one. And it's a beautiful product as well. Also a little bit pricey, but I think more affordable than this one. So those are those are some um, options as far as as moisturizers go. The last step is sun protection, of course, and 
sunscreen comes in the very, very last step. So after you've moisturized, you know, you allow a couple of seconds for the moisturizer to, you know, get sink into the skin, and then you go in with your sunscreen. I brought down a couple of the ones that I am loving at this moment. Oh, by the way, when you have hyperpigmentation, melasma, whatever, they, rec they recommend that you use a, a tinted moisturizer because somehow it provides an extra layer of protection. That's what I've, I've heard that from a couple of different dermatologists, so I'm just passing the information along. Also, disclaimer, I forgot to say it at the beginning, I am not a dermatologist. This is simply me sharing what I have learned about skincare through, through different dermatologists, through my experience with trying different products and having done you know, my own research because I just, I'm fascinated by skincare, I love learning about it. And so uh, this is just me sharing my information, I'm sharing the information that I have. Keep in mind though that what works for me may not work for you. It depends on your skin type. Okay, going back to sunscreen. This one's from the drugstore. It's a really good one and I've heard a couple of people recommend it. It's Australian Gold Botanical 50 Tinted Face and it provides uh, SPF 50 protection. It is a tinted moisturizer that has a, they, has a little bit of color. And they actually have, I think, one other, yes, I know they do. They have one other shade that's darker than this one, but I tried it and the color was sort of like a gray color, so I don't use it. I think I threw it out or I returned it, I'm not sure. But this is a beautiful product, especially if you um, are not wanting to like do a full face or foundation. Um, you put this on and it does a beautiful job at like blurring out the skin, really even evening everything out and it makes it look as if you have put on an actual, you know, tinted, mo tinted moisturizer like with coverage. Um, so this is a great option from the drugstore. This one is, I believe, a Japanese brand. I know it's K-Beauty. The brand is called Innisfree Daily UV Defense Sunscreen. And this one has SPF 36. This one is a clear. This one is not a tinted one. So it comes out white, but when you blend it into the skin, it disappears. It has a really nice, clean scent. I have gone through like three of these, and I recommend it to a lot of people um, at Sephora when they come in looking for a sunscreen. Um, one, it's affordable. Two, it feels amazing on the skin. And uh, three, I've heard from several people that this is the only sunscreen that doesn't break them out. Uh, because it doesn't add that extra like oiliness like some sunscreens do. So if you're someone that is acne prone, I would highly recommend that one. Another good one is from Dermatology. This happens to be the universal one, Universal Tint and Moisturizer SPF 45, and it's from their Protect line. This does have a little bit of color to it. it it feels really nice, it has no scent, so if you have sensitive skin and you like products that are not scented, this would be a great option. And my latest discovery, I found this through uh, my daughter, she, I don't know, I think on TikTok or something, it's called Black Girl Sunscreen. And this one, uh, you can get at Target, Amazon, I'm sure. This one has SPF 30. And this does have a really strong sunscreen scent. So it comes out white. And a little bit goes a, a far, like a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. And um, if so, if you're someone that doesn't like that scent of sunscreen, I personally, I happen to love that. I lather this all over my face. Oh, and another thing I wanted to mention um, because I myself just found this out not too long ago. I used to think that I needed a separate sunscreen for my eyes. And so I would struggle finding that because it's hard to find an eye cream with SPF. And I remember I did find one at one point at Ulta and then it would burn my eyes. And so I would be like, you know, doing my makeup and tears would be coming down. So that was a mess. I forget which brand that was. Um, but anyway, you can use the sunscreen go I put it everywhere I go in under my eyes on my lids because you definitely want to protect that sensitive area and the goal is to just find one that you feel comfortable with putting around your eyes that doesn't burn or that doesn't sting everything that I have shown you here I put all over my face and my eyes are fine 
Um, so and it's something that, is, is, especially as we start to get older, this is where the main problem is more noticeable when we smile. See, when we smile, those lines. So we need we need to put sunscreen in that area. I also use sunscreen in my hands, and I know that some people that maybe that's a step that they skip. I don't skip it. I put it all over my eyes, my face, down my neck and then my hands. Some people even do the ears, but I think my ears will be fine. I don't think they need some protection. They're fine. Um, so that is like the last step. Now, I'm gonna back up a little bit because I, I wanted to sort of talk about the treatments. I know people sometimes get confused. Well, what do I use first? How do I know the order? So basically, the rule of thumb is you put the lighter, serums and then move on to the hep thicker ones so if you have let's say this serum this is very watery very liquidy and then i have one that's thicker in in texture i will go in with this one first let it absorb and then i go in with the one that's heavier second and then maybe i'll have one that's a cream form let's say like this the, the this retinol is thicker than this one so then i would put this after so i would go in that order so you go from lighter to thicker and that's kind of just the, the way that you can kind of picture it whatever gets absorbed faster into the skin you know you put that in first and then go after then next can go something that's sort of like in between and then followed by something heavier which is why moisturizer is the last step at least at night it's the last step in the morning the last step is the sunscreen so I wanted to just kind of clear that up because I know that can be confusing another way to look at it is um, for example if my main concern is hyperpigmentation I will go in with this one first because I want that to be the one that gets absorbed into my skin the most right so even if this was let's say a little heavier a little heavier than this one i would put my tranix in first because that is my number one concern and i want that ingredient really really to be like the first one in line so you can go about it that way as well there's really no way you can mess it up there's you know it's it's skincare it's all gonna get in but like me for example at night i use up to four different serums like i'll use um, I'll use a retinoid. I will use sometimes two different things for my hyperpigmentation. Sometimes I'll put in a Q10, which is an antioxidant. Um, there's a great Q10 from the Inky List, by the way, that is something that is great to incorporate because, it, again, it's protecting the skin, sort of like vitamin C. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can kind of uh, throw into your skincare and then I also switch it up you know like one night I will do it will be anti-aging night so I will go in with those ingredients that I know are meant for anti-aging then the next night will be hyperpigmentation night so that's where I go in with my you know two three different ingredients that I have um, which I have upstairs I didn't bring them down because I have a ton of different things that I use um, mostly at night because at night is when you want to really use the ingredients that are going to target your issues because at night your skin you know is, is it's when it all starts working things start to uh the cells are turning over and so those ingredients are you know seeping in and that's when all the work happens so it's really important at night to um to to really have a uh, a really in intensive um not intensive I can't think of the word, but like a well-rounded skincare, um, especially at night. So with that being said, guys, I think that wraps up this video. Everything that I mentioned, I will list it in the description box. I hope this video was somewhat helpful. I hope it cleared up some things for you. Um, but if you have any questions, please, please just write them below. Um, also, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching if it was somewhat useful um it really helps me out so i would really appreciate that um so yeah i will see you guys very soon on the next video and um don't forget to leave me a comment all right be well take care bye bye